Big 89 WLS, you know, I say it all the time, this country needs a healthy Republican Party. And uh, what's calling or being called a Republican Party right now isn't healthy. As a matter of fact, it's going in for testing regularly. Mm-hmm. Uh, a true conservative, an incredibly successful governor, uh, along with being a, 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 a just beloved president of, of Purdue, Mitch Daniels joins us now. But, um, uh, Governor, I just have to ask you about something off the off the page here, and that's baseball. You love baseball. What do you mean off the page? That's page one to me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, it's been a pretty interesting season. You know, the, uh, my my favorite team started to play well. That would be the Dodgers. And then you got stories like this remarkable fella, Otani. Uh, been a been a interesting year. Yeah, and it's weird how the Angels live in this vacuum where two of the best players of the last generation don't get the hype outside of real real baseball fans. But the reason I bring baseball up is we need you here to run the White Sox. So let's get that done. Well, uh, sold, you know. that Finally, a, a, a full-time job that I, it, uh, <laughs> sounds interesting to me. Um, yeah, and I don't know. I heard there was a little shake-up there, and I, I hope they get things uh Moving in the right direction. You may recall, Steve, I, uh, being an out of towner, I don't get in the middle of these north side, south side right. fights you guys have, and I, 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 I'd fine with me if both of both those teams do well. So uh, I, uh, I hope they get it. Uh, I hope they get it going. Yeah, look, a, a winner is a winner, and and I agree with you. I tend to lean White Sox, uh, but that doesn't mean I don't hope the Cubs play well as well. Um, but uh, you know, you get offered jobs every day, and everybody's talking about you. And politics and all those things. I'm just saying, keep the doors open, Mitch Daniels. You know, I mean, uh, anything's possible. Well, you know, we 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 listen if the phone rings, but uh, I, got, <laughs> I, got, I, got, I got a bunch of things going. I'm not I'm not now. I'm busy. I just uh, uh, passed on the uh, any uh, 24/7 options at least for now. I got you. Uh, by the way, follow on Facebook the Mitch Daniels Leadership foundation at mdlf indiana and just go there you can get some sense of what they're doing every day but uh, helping folks in indiana as you continue to do uh andrea say hi to the governor good morning governor nice to talk to you again always andrea thank you for having me well we have a first debate tonight eight candidates who do you like as of now and who do you think might be dare i use the word uh the uh the surprise candidate who uh we're, we could maybe see uh something new from tonight not talk about past I'll, past presidents. I'll, I'll definitely duck the first question. Uh, <laughs> Maybe I should have rephrased. Not who do you like? Who do you expect to hope, see? Uh... What I hope to see. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I hope. Uh, and I'd be kidding you if I promised to be glued to the set tonight. I'll, I'll probably uh, you know listen to WLS to find out what what happened. But the um, no, I mean I hope that these uh, folks, all of them, will look forward. I hope they'll. Uh, uh, this is a country with problems, you know, and we're uh, all the preoccupation. Your colleagues in the media cannot get enough of the um, the proceedings around the former president. And I understand why that's newsworthy, but you know, uh, inflation is uh, still a um, an insidious uh, uh, thief of people's hopes and dreams. We've got to get it uh, under greater control. We have an enormous debt problem uh, coming, and both the top both the top two uh, contenders right now, the current and the previous president, are promising to make it worse. And this is an incredible betrayal of uh, the promises we have made to our senior citizens um, and tomorrow's senior citizens. And uh, so I hope we'll hear about that. I hope we'll hear about how we confront the threat of a belligerent China. Um, and gather our allies around us once again to uh, protect our freedoms and our uh, and our prosperity. So I hope it's forward looking, and I hope they you know uh, uh, don't go after each other or anybody else for that matter. Be a be a nice example of positive politics as we once knew it. Yeah, how about that? That'd be a change. Yep. Um, you brought up a couple of things there. I want to follow up on one is the debate itself. Is the debate as it stands not tonight? But the format, the architecture of the debate, is it is it is it a good thing to do in this day and age? Is it still the way to present these candidates? I think it's one. It may not be the only way or the best way, but I think it's it's appropriate. I mean, um, 
I think America needs to see some choices, uh, other choices than the two we're so very, very familiar with, uh, and draw draw their measure, you know, see how they present themselves. Uh, you ask, could there be a surprise candidate? Well, sure. Uh, who knows? And uh, um, that, that can only come, I think, from people having a, a personal exposure. You know, um, we, we pick presidents. It's a highly personal choice for most voters. All the all the uh, research says that. And so, uh, again, there may be better formats and, and additional formats, but I, I think this is what, highly appropriate. Well, to your point, Governor, this morning, I asked Pat Brady this this morning as well. Recent CNN poll says 63 percent of Americans disapprove of the way President Biden has been handling handling the economy. But on the flip side, the American Enterprise Institute says that a second Trump presidency would be a disaster for the U.S. economy. So what are we to do? Well, we do. We are in an unprecedented situation where it doesn't matter whose poll you read. And something like two thirds of Americans are not uh, comfortable with the choice they apparently or they're most likely to be presented with. Um, and uh, uh, I will tell you that although people keep dismissing the idea that uh, a third option could emerge um, uh, as, and, and an alternative for those people who can't um, get comfortable with either yeah. this president or the previous president, uh, we've not been in this situation before. And uh, therefore, I don't think the past is an ironclad guide to what is and isn't possible. You know, uh, you know, a lot of rich folks. I know a few. You know, all of them. Um, I would love to see a consortium of rich folks who really are concerned about the future of America step up and support a legitimate third party wanting to do right, focusing on the issues type of candidate. And I don't know who that is, Mm -hmm. but uh, it seems like it's something that could be done for with. Folks, a lot. I'm not telling rich people how to spend their money. I'm just saying, if you have a lot, here's a way to to really make a significant change. Do those conversations take place? Well, first of all, I wish I knew more rich folks than I than you seem to think I do. But, uh, <laughs> Would have made the campaigns easier, <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> but but you know, my I guess my reaction to that, Steve, is that um, it, it's not just wealthy people. It's two thirds of America who, when asked, say they're they're uneasy about sure. uh, this president and they are. Uh, they're very uneasy about a rematch uh, of, the, of the last uh, right. election. And so uh, uh, people at, at, at all levels of life or at all income levels and so forth, I think, share uh, this. And um, that's why I don't I think it's uh, impossible if if, no, if nobody uh, on the Republican side catches fire, and it almost has to be there, absent a, a intervening uh, a health event or something, that President Biden... Uh, seems seems assured of the nom- his nomination, and so uh, unless one of these folks does capture people's imagination and maybe inspire a, a little di- different uh, thinking than we're hearing now, um, I just uh, w- would not uh, brush off this idea that that a uh, the the folks that call themselves no labels, for instance, are qualifying place on the ballot as a as a, a backstop in case. It's a, a Biden Trump. Well, yeah, yeah, and that's that's really where I was going with it is because I agree with you. The, the vast majority of the country would like to have a third option, um, and the quiet majority would like to have that third option. I think it's vital, and the idea being that it's an expensive thing to run, and the name recognition part of it. So that's why I'm asking for the rich folks' money. So yeah. apparently, I'll call them and tell them you don't know them. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I want to ask you about China. I want to ask you about college getting back in session and a couple other things uh, in a few minutes we have left with Governor Mitch Daniels, former president of Purdue, and uh, the new boss of the White Sox, if I have my way. Yeah. <laughs> Stand by. All right, back to Governor Mitch Daniels. Um, school is uh, back in session. You got an itch to go run a university anywhere? No, I, I, I couldn't have had a better 10 years than I did at Purdue University. Uh, and... Uh, it was just a wonderful uh, experience. I just uh, uh, don't think there's an encore for something like that. And uh, I was I was very uh, fortunate. Um, I hope it wasn't just good luck uh, that, that uh, uh, we've secured a fantastic successor uh, who's going to take the place straight upward. So uh, uh, I'm going to consider that a a chapter successfully concluded, but it, yeah. but it was fun to do. Yeah, and I want to congratulate you because you were doing things that 
other universities around the country weren't even attempting and keeping costs down and making it uh, something that people could actually do and not break the bank. So I, I would say, yes, a job well done. Let me get Nick Gale in here. Governor, if I could ask you to put your governor's hat back on for a minute. Here in Chicago, we've got the mayor who's proposing the so-called mansion tax, which would tax properties at uh, that are over a million dollars, okay? And so the thinking is that this is going to impact real estate within the city of Chicago, impact businesses that have to rent space, and maybe drive those to out of state. And are, are, are folks in Indiana, in Iowa, Wisconsin, watching this play out and wondering if now's the time to start poaching some businesses? Well, start poaching. We've been poaching for years, and, and well, yeah. thank you for helping. I mean, you have to put that <laughs> oh, out. no. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just say, you know, uh, every time uh, Illinois or, uh, and or Chicago jacks up a tax, lets crime get out of control. Um, I listened to your traffic report in, you know, an hour and twenty two minutes. Yeah, Here's good time. And it's on a good day. Oh, that is, is that a way to live? And so, um, <laughs> you know, um, there's the uh, Census Bureau has reported uh, uh, in migration or out migration from Illinois, and a lot of that does come to Indiana. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we're, uh, uh, I don't want to make too light of this, but in terms of state competition, this is what's great about our federal system. And uh, if states do things that are wise, generally uh, people notice, businesses notice, and vice versa. So, um, you know, um, don't wish anybody ill, so to speak, over there. But uh, if you want to keep uh, jacking up taxes and and uh, making life difficult for Individuals and businesses, um, uh, Indiana, among other places, will uh, be happy to collect the uh, benefits. That would be a good day here if we drive to the border and there's a billboard that says, Welcome to Indiana. Hey, Illinois, thanks for the help. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll, I have to tell you a story. We have put up those billboards back all those years ago when I was uh, serving. Um, and and the, the the original plan was a billboard that said, you know, tired of high taxes. There'd be a series, tired of high taxes, tired of overregulation, you know, so forth. You must be ill. Well, somebody <laughs> persuaded me that was, persuaded me that was a little unkind, and so they cha- we changed it to come on in. But ah. uh, you know, I don't don't think I wasn't tempted. I, yeah, I, I, I'm guessing you may still have the prototype somewhere in your office or nearby. <laughs> Um, does. All right, so uh, let me let me throw back this uh, China question at you too, uh, and that is uh, China's economy is very soft and maybe worse than soft. Um, we haven't heard much about it from the White House. We certainly haven't heard anything about it from Congress. Is there an opportunity being missed there to put some pressure on China in regards to the relationship with Russia, the war in Ukraine, and other ways we could use this as leverage? I think this is a complex uh, question. Uh, you know, it's it uh, on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, I uh, am uh, happy to see the struggles that they have and are going to have. You know, they're an aging society. Uh, they're going to be sclerotic if they don't uh, if, if they remain uh, so repressive as they are now. Um, we, we know about their own debt problems and so forth. But on Tuesday and Thursday and Saturday, I think you know I don't want them to get in too deep a trouble because that, that's when dictators. Uh, divert the attention, um, historically divert the attention of their peoples by attacking somebody. Sure. And, uh, you know, this is not anything anybody should wish for. And we know where that could be triggered. So, you know, I think that uh, maybe maybe the happiest, the po- most positive situation for our nation is that, that they struggle and then have to pull in their horns a little bit, but don't become so uh, beleaguered that... Um, uh, Mr. Xi decides to uh, change the subject by attacking Taiwan or somewhere. Yeah, let's uh, let's certainly hope not. Um, I'm going to let Andrea have the last word because she has an important fall question. But before we Thank get you. to that, I would be remiss if I didn't say to you, if the phone rings and it's somebody that says, would you consider being that third party legitimate conservative candidate now or later? Have you closed the door on that? Um, you, know, uh, you must not know my wife. 
Or my four. Or you my four you mean the boss of the listen, house? Yes. Listen, I understand. <laughs> I understand the family consideration. So, uh, I, I can I can name a lot of reasons that's not the best idea for America. But there's that's you know that's the starting one. I uh, no, I mean uh, I uh, took a look at that years and years ago. Decided it wasn't a path that was right for for me or the family, and that would still be the answer. But um, uh, you know, just to, to, to repeat myself, I I don't think there's a zero percent chance that that uh, that something like that is called into existence by the current situation. I, I'm just I, I just uh, yeah, I mean you know this because I've got to know you a little bit, but uh, I was a fan long before I ever said hello to you, and uh, I think you're an important voice to have in this conversation because you know the process how it should be run. You're more than willing to work with the other side. You understand that's a necessary component of it. So just I'm glad to know well, you're thanks for saying. You know, I try to I try to chip in. I, I write columns regularly in the Washington Post. I um, uh, give speeches. I'll be at the Sinai Forum uh, not far from Chicago, the mm-hmm. big annual uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, wonderful program that they have uh, has invited me. Uh, I think it's next month. So uh, you know, I'll try to contribute to the conversation as a, as a as a patriotic citizen should, uh, but uh, but there are uh, you know roles that probably aren't aren't going to work out. Um, and an alumnus of the University of Illinois, you get the last question. Oh, thank you. All right, Governor, we got to talk some college football, which gets underway next week. Uh, you have a new head coach. We have Coach B. Uh, I think uh, you face my Illini on the thirtieth. What are you seeing for the upcoming season? I know you're the reigning champ, but you got a new head coach and, and the Big Ten and now, the quarterback, Governor. The Big Ten well, you know, is now the Big Thirty, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, you know where we got that coach. You yeah, know, from he, Illinois, that, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That that's right. There's a poach for you. Yep. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and the uh, you know we have I have very high hopes there. He's he's well known as a a defensive mastermind, and uh, you know that that's not been the personality of Purdue football uh, lately. We've been known for wide open game, and I hope maybe we can have the best of both. You know, um, I don't want to dive too deeply into a very big subject, but. Uh, I've been very, very uneasy for years now at the direction you could tell college, especially the big revenue sports were going, sure. basically semi-professional. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it's a fact of life. Nothing's going to change it. Uh, NCAA is not going to be able to suddenly wind the clock back, uh, and uh, nobody else is either. Uh, it'll be entertaining. It'll It'll be successful. I'll watch it and enjoy it. I just always say just – don't call it college sports there you go. because we've left. We're leaving that behind, mm. and when when we do, um, at least at certain schools and certain sports, um, I think that we'll we'll have lost something. But uh, uh, the new era is here, and um, hope hope we make the most of it. I uh, appreciate your time and taking a minute away from a couple of days off and your own busy schedule. You're always welcome here, and I hope you'll come back. I'd love to. Thanks a lot, y'all. Thank you. Thanks, Governor. That's uh, former yeah. Governor Mitch Daniels, former president of Purdue, and a guy mm-hmm. that ought to be in the White House. I think you're saying I don't it, just mean it, as a the tour. White Sox. <laughs> hey, White House, White Sox, there's a theme developing.